Welcome to January's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is check if all ones are at least length k places away. Given an array nums of zeros and ones and an integer k, return true if all ones are at least k places away from each other. Otherwise, return false. If we're given an array like this and a k of 2, we can see this is true because all the ones are at least 2 places apart. Now with this example, if we're given a k of 2, this is going to return false because these two ones are only one space apart. Now if you look at the hint, they just tell you each time you find a number 1, check whether or not it is k or more places away from the next one. If it's not, return false. So that tells us we could solve this just straightforwardly. Uh, what we'll do is iterate down all our 1s and zeros, and we'll keep track of how many uh, places we've seen away from the previous one. The only one that we need to uh, take care of with the edge case is the very first one that we see, because the very first one we don't care how many places that's away from. That's going to be the kind of like the base part that we check. So to take care of that, we could just set that to K to make sure that that's never going to return a false. So what I'll do here is first initialize a so far variable to equal K. And this represents how many spaces we've seen the previous one before. So for N in nums, uh, if N equals one, we want to check to see if our so far is less than K. And if so far is less than k, we know that we can return a false. Otherwise, reset our so far to equal 0. Now, if we see a 0, we just need to increase our so far. So this kind of takes care of the very first one. It's always going to be less than k. Or it's never going to be less than k, so this will never be false. But the next time, uh, we will be counting up how many zeros in between we, that we've seen with the next one. So once that's done, if we are able to get through this loop, then we can return a true. And I'm fairly certain this is going to work. There we go. So this is an O of n time complexity. We don't use any extra space. I would say this is the optimal solution. Now, just as a bonus, what if we were given the nums as an integer instead, and we want to solve this like bitwise? Uh, that's kind of a bonus question. Like because these are zeros and ones, we could represent these as an integer. So let's just see how we might actually take care of something like that. We can start off by initializing an x, and this is going to be the integer representation of our nums with binary reps. So for n in nums, we are going to increase our, um, I think it's like this, our x by one place or one digit, and we will do it or with the n right here. So this is going to tell us whether it's a 0 or 1. So now that we have our x, well, if x equals 0, then we can just return a true immediately. Uh, otherwise, we need to run that same algorithm that we did before. Now, how can we do that? Well, let's first take care of the trailing zeros. Um, we're going to do this backwards because of our shift operator. Um, what we'll do is first get rid of all the trailing zeros first until we find our very first one. So while uh, x and 1 equals 0, we will shift our x by one digit until we find our very first one. And now we'll do our loop here. So we'll say while x um, uh, and one does not equal zero. Uh, I, I, I guess we want to go all the way up to the very last one. So to take care of that, we'll say x while x does not equal one. Uh, we'll have an inner loop here. Well, first we will shift it. And we'll say while x, the same algorithm here with x and 1 equals 0. We will again shift by 1, but we are going to initialize some variable so far. We'll say 0, and we will increase it by 1 each time. Now once we're out of that, we want to check to see if this so far is less than k. If it is, return a false. Otherwise, it's going to go around, and if there's another one, it'll do the same thing. So um, up until then, if we can get out of this loop, then it's going to be a true. So let's make sure this works. Uh, looks like that's working. And there we go. Now this algorithm, you might think, oh, this got to be faster, but it actually isn't uh, for various reasons. But the reason you might want to know it is because, well, you know, with zeros and ones, if they give it to you as a binary, it would be um, 
much easier to do this. But unfortunately with me, Bitwise is my weakest area by far. Uh, so this is probably not something that I would do. All right, thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.